Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, colleagues, senators. Uh, Madam President, before I <coughs> share on the resolution before us, I join the rest of us in congratulating our colleague senator on the receipt of a award. I also join us in extending condolences to the numerous families who have suffered loss, loss in, in, during this COVID time, particularly myself being from the sporting fraternity would extend uh, condolences to the family of Brother Yusuf of South Schuster. Madam President, to the resolution before us seeking Parliament approval to extend the date by which the estimate of expenditure is to be tabled. I believe by now, Madam President, we would be aware that the, ex the financial year, every year, ends on March 31st. That has not changed. And also, we are aware that the budget process involves several steps, and some of them begin as early as May of the previous year to get appraisals and staffing and all the other activities that lead to the presentation, the preparation and presentation of the budget estimates. And to come here now um, to ask for that extension, Madam President, I, I just want to remind the House that the Constitution makes provisions for that, and under Section 79, it is very clear what is expected and what can be done in the event that as we have correctly stated, the country is faced with an extreme challenge like COVID and has to make necessary adjustments. And so I think the Constitution had a good intention in giving any government the flexibility to make that adjustment by ensuring that there was provisions made for 30 days beyond the 31st of March for that to happen. And so, Madam President, I am now wondering why this has become necessary, because that provision is made in the Constitution. And why is the extension being sought? But then I remember, Madam President, that for the last year or so, we have been preoccupied as a government with quite a lot. And in the explanation provided by the leader of government business, with reference to the challenges that the government has faced with staff and so on, that were presented to make a case for that extension. I want to remind the government that COVID has been with us since March of 2020. It's almost a year now that we have had to be dealing with the COVID pandemic. So this situation is not something that just um, came upon us suddenly in the last few months. It has been with us for almost 12 months now. And I want to ask whether anything was put in place, realizing that this pandemic is so unpredictable and can affect several different operations of government, including this critical operation, which is the laying of the estimates. And whether the government had paid any due attention to making adjustments and paying attention to that eventuality. Like I said from the beginning, Madam President, the estimates are laid every year um, on March. Well, they should be laid by March 31st. The, the, the fiscal year or the financial year ends on March 31st every year. And so I, I'm asking whether the, 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 the technocrats who I have a lot of confidence in, who guide the government in terms of the budget preparation procedures, whether they had not suggested or made any contingency plans um, to deal with that, and whether we just found, found ourselves in that situation because no one had paid attention to that inevitable um, situation that we're in. I would like to give the technocrats some credit. I believe that they would have 
recognize that. But I'm not sure that, as was suggested by the leader of government business, that the only reason we have found ourselves having to come here to seek that extension is because we were faced with COVID. I think that almost every, as we call it, faux pas that the government has made has been blamed on COVID. Poor COVID. COVID has taken, taken the blame for every single thing that seems to have um, happened. And I want to ask whether the government was really preoccupied with solely COVID or whether there were other activities that had caused the government to take its focus away for, of, from preparing for this situation. And now that we are in the 11th hour trying to come to Parliament to seek an extension, mind you, that has been provided for in the Constitution. And so, Madam President, I want to say that the state of emergency, for example, that we, ha we are in, it allows the government to pass um, legislation and that legislation can override, you know, some of the provisions made in Chapter 1 of the Constitution. And if I can just mention a few of them, fundamental, fundamental rights um, and freedoms, um, you know, freedom of um, assembly and association, freedom of movement, and so on. These, in Chapter 1, were, um, are being addressed um, through the state of emergency. However, Madam President, that state of emergency that we are in now um, does not in any way interfere or does not authorize the government to ignore any of the other sections of the Constitution, particularly Section 79, which speaks to what should happen if you find yourself in a situation where, as we are now, your government operations are affected by, let us say, a COVID pandemic. So, Madam President, in essence, all I'm saying is that I cannot stand here and say that a government may not have a difficulty in meeting certain um, deadlines or expectations, such as laying of the estimates, because we know that we have had extenuating circumstances. However, when we have the option of using the existing laws, the existing provisions that are made particularly by the constitution of the, of the land, I think we should use it and not burden ourselves with having to come to Parliament to make such, um, to pass such legislation. And so, Madam President, because I'm guided by this, I submit that the government may have had a challenge and there may have been need, as has happened before. It's not the first time that it has happened before, um, it has happened when it comes to extension. But I think the process and the method that is being used could have been different and could have just put in um, that provision that was made by our country's constitution. I think, Madam President, that is my submission on that matter, and I hope that the government takes it. Thank you, Madam President.